So an important distinction um, in structural equation models uh, is between what we refer to as recursive and non-recursive models. Um, so all the models that we've looked at in these videos so far are recursive models. Um, and a recursive model is uh, a model where all of the causal effects are going in the same direction, are unidirectional, uh, and the disturbances, the error terms, are not correlated with one another. Um, and we can contrast this with a non-recursive model, uh, which is a model where we have some kind of feedback loop, where two variables are uh, causing each other, um, and therefore we have what we can refer to as reciprocal effects, or where we have uh, correlated uh, disturbances. So uh, these, this difference is, is important because uh, it has implications for model identification um, and it has implications for um, whether we can, how we interpret and, 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 and uh, uh, trust the, the, the correctness of the estimates that we get from our models. So here's an example of a, a recursive path diagram model and um, we have x1 uh, causing x2, and there's a disturbance term for that equation. x2 in turn causes y1, we have a disturbance term there, um, and also in that equation we have x3. So y1 is regressed on x2 and x3. But here we see that um, all of the causal effects are uh, going in one direction, um, and none of, none of the disturbances are, are correlated. So this would be a, a, a recursive model. A non-recursive model, on the other hand, um, will have some kind of feedback loop. And here you can see um, that there is such a feedback loop between y1 and x1. So x1 we have here is causing y1 and y1 uh, is causing uh, x1. So these are reciprocal effects. And this is actually quite a, 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 a plausible kind of causal mechanism. There are many examples uh, of situations where we would expect two variables to be uh, causing uh, each other. We can think, for example, of um, economic perceptions. The more people uh, perceive that the economy uh, is doing well, um, the more that they will support the government, and the more that people support the government, the more that they may think that the economy is doing well. So there are many examples where we would want to estimate uh, this type of equation. Um, and we also see here that we have a, a correlation between the two uh, disturbance terms, the errors uh, in those uh, structural equations. And that's in, indeed implied by the fact that we have this uh, reciprocal cause and effect between y1 uh, and x1 means that uh, the disturbances must be correlated. Now, there are some grey areas. Um, and this results in what we refer to as partially recursive models. Here we see that we have um, a, a correlation between the disturbance terms, but we don't have any uh, direct effects amongst the endogenous variables in this model, the endogenous variables here being uh, y1 and x1. So in this case, we can treat this in terms of uh, identification as a recursive model, um, but here we do, in, in this diagram, we have uh, a, a direct effect amongst the endogenous variables. We have a regression uh, of y1 on x1, um, and we then also have this disturbance term correlation. So this would be treated uh, as a non-recursive model. Now, um, I said that recursivity or recursive versus non-recursive model status is, is important for identification, but that's not uh, terribly uh, interesting from a sort of analytical perspective. Recursivity is also important really because um, a recursive model is always identified and it's simple to estimate. We can estimate um, uh, recursive models using OLS, using a, a set of, uh, of, of OLS models. Um, but that simplicity is also rather restrictive. It means that we can't estimate the more complex kinds of models uh, that we would often want to. So introducing a, a non-recursive model means that we have more flexibility in the kinds of uh, spe model specifications that we can use. And these are actually a lot of the reasons why many analysts want to use structural equation modeling, structural equation modeling software, because it's, it's actually very easy uh, to specify this kind of model.
Um, but we have to be aware that just because we can specify a model um, as a path diagram and we will generate some parameter estimates, um, that doesn't mean that we can always uh, trust them as being uh, valid uh, estimates. So um, non-recursive models, despite being more flexible, uh, also can be challenging in terms of identification. Um, and we'll often require, in order to uh, uh, achieve an identified model, we will need to use um, other variables in the model that which may not be um, of direct substantive interest in the model, but we need them nonetheless uh, for identification purposes. So, as I said, if we have uh, a model, it may be empirically identified, it doesn't mean necessarily that we can uh, trust the parameter estimates. Um, and in particular, if we want to have uh, unbiased and consistent estimates for reciprocal paths, these are when we have arrows running between two uh, variables in a, in a, in a model, um, we have to make some quite strict and some would argue often implausible assumptions about the variables in the model. So in particular in this sort of context with reciprocal effects, uh, we need to uh, assume that we have some exogenous variables in the model um, that we can treat as instrumental variables. And this is an, another important idea for uh, understanding and implementing this kind of uh, non-recursive model, the idea of an instrumental variable. And to understand what we mean by an instrumental variable in this context, it's useful first to understand another concept, which is that of uh, an endogenous regressor. And here we've got a, a simple path diagram to help understand what we mean by an endogenous regressor. So we have here, y1 regressed on x1, we want to estimate beta, where we'd ideally like to treat beta as the causal effect of x1 uh, on y1. Um, but we also see here that we have a, a, a covariance or a correlation um, between the disturbance term in this equation and x1, which is the predictor. Now, we, we know from our uh, OLS classes that this is uh, an assumption that we have to make uh, in OLS that we don't have a correlation between the error term and the predictors. If we, if we find that there is, a, if there is a, a, such a correlation, um, then we have what's referred to as an endogenous regressor. The X1 is an endogenous regressor. And this is because, it can be for a number of reasons, but um, will often be because of some unobserved variable um, that we, we should have in our model that maybe is uh, 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 related to both uh, X1 and Y1, or it may be because of uh, simultaneous uh, causal effects that X1 is causing Y1 and Y1 is causing X1, the sort of reciprocal effects that we're interested in here. That would generate this, this correlation. So um, when we have this kind of a situation, we need uh, an instrumental variable for x1 if we, are a if we want to be able to interpret the beta coefficient as the causal effect of x1 uh, on y1. So uh, an instrumental variable um, is a variable that's going to deal with this endogenous regressor problem. Um, and it does this by introducing exogenous variability into the endogenous regressor. And to have the properties of, a, of an instrumental variable, then which we'll refer to as, as Z, our instrumental variable will be Z in this context, um, the, the, the instrument must um, cause the endogenous regressor, but not cause the outcome. Now, there are lots of different examples of, of instrumental variables that, that have been used in the empirical literature, um, and we'll come on to some of those. Um, but one good way of thinking about a, a, an instrumental variable is the assignment variable in a randomized control trial. The randomization which determines whether someone is allocated to the treatment or to the control condition. This is a perfect in, uh, 
instrumental variable because it's, cor it's very strongly correlated with whether you are in the uh, treatment or the control group, but it is uncorrelated with whatever the outcome is in the randomized control trial. So uh, that's a good way of thinking about what an instrumental variable is. And uh, the sorts of uh, variables that we will be looking to use as instruments should come as close as possible to that sort of uh, um, randomization type of variable. So this is what we're looking for in terms of a path diagram here. Um, we've got uh, an endogenous regressor uh, X1 and we need um, a, an instrument which is Z1 here which causes X1 um, but doesn't cause uh, Y1 other than through its effect on uh, X1. So you can see it has a, an indirect effect on uh, Y1 but not a direct effect. So this would be uh, a, an instrumental variable. As I said, there are many papers, particularly in economics, which have used natural uh, variability, natural experiments, if you like. Um, and one example is the, the Vietnam lottery draft, which determined whether um, US citizens were uh, 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 allocated to go to Vietnam or not. This was done on the basis of a, uh, a random lottery. So if you wanted to, if you want to assess the effect of uh, going to Vietnam on later outcomes like your earnings, your education, uh, your mental health and so on, um, then you can use that initial lottery draft as a, an instrument for uh, going to Vietnam War. Another one that's been used is proximity to uh, your nearest college um, for studying the effects of education on earnings. Obviously, um, if you just look at the relationship between um, education and earnings, there are many uh, unobserved variables that would mean that uh, you couldn't just take the, the simple correlation between education and earnings as a causal effect. But if you can use something like proximity to, your, to, a, to a college, um, that can have a direct effect on education, but not a direct effect on, on your earnings other than through uh, its effect on education. The third example might be um, variability in the, uh, the compulsory schooling age. This can vary across uh, geographic boundaries, um, in US states, for example, have uh, different compulsory schooling ages, or in the UK, uh, there was a, an increase um, in the compulsory uh, schooling age uh, from 15 to 16 in um, 1973. And this can be used to as an instrument for, again, the effects of education on uh, later outcomes, such as earnings, because the policy change um, introduced random variability into how much schooling people uh, obtained, um, but it wouldn't have had any direct effect on earnings. So those are some examples of, of instrumental variables and it should give you an idea um, that you have to meet some quite strict re requirements to, to be a good instrumental variable. And e even for these three quite well-known examples, um, there have been criticisms of these as whether they really are uh, valid instruments. So again, this is something of a caution because non-recursive models are easy to specify. Here's an example, again, using the European Social Survey data, uh, where we're looking at uh, the relationship between um, life satisfaction, uh, happiness, and social trust. Um, scholars have been interested in, in what the relationship is here. And this model specifies uh, reciprocal uh, causality uh, between these, uh, these variables. Now, if you just try to estimate that model um, w w without the uh, two exogenous variables at the bottom of the, uh, the, the diagram, whether you're married and, and um, your earnings, it would be unidentified. So these variables are, are acting as instrumental variables in the model. Um, but it's not really plausible to assume that they are uh, valid instruments because we have to assume that 
neither of them has a direct effect on the other latent variable in this model. Each one only uh, causes one latent variable, but it's not really uh, reasonable to assume that your income uh, is not related to, uh, to your level of social trust. We know that's uh, an implausible um, uh, assumption. So we have to be careful just because we can uh, estimate a, and we get parameter estimates for a structural equation model which is non-recursive, uh, we have to check our assumptions uh, that are needed to make that identification and, and assess whether we can really uh, trust uh, the, the estimates.